we can have rogue equipment attached to our infrastructure of any kind, let's focus on a rogue switch connecting up. So this hacker is making it appear to us that there's a switch inside of our infrastructure down even further. Usually this is going to happen at the access layer. This hacker could be trunking to our environment, could be running spanning tree protocol, capturing traffic for all of the VLANs across the trunk. That's a big risk. If this hacker can, by way of connecting to our infrastructure, dynamically forming a trunk because our infrastructure is set to DTP auto or dynamic auto, if they can figure out our VTP domain, they can easily trunk to our environment and capture all traffic because, uh, or at least capture broadcast traffic and traffic that is flooded down to that place. And they can also spoof MAC addresses to increase the likelihood that they're going to be capturing traffic for their VLAN. So how do we protect against this? What we do is we lock down our access ports. You want to templatize this configuration. You want to make it your own. So without further ado, let's make sure that you understand exactly what's being done here. Go to the range of ports that are considered access ports. Explicitly define them as an access port. What this does is it turns off the DTP protocol. By turning off the DTP protocol, there's not an opportunity to dynamically form a trunk. And that's very, very powerful in locking down the port to a single VLAN. And then all you have to do is constrain what VLAN or configure what VLAN is off of that port. Now, if a port is unused, shut, shut it down. Don't leave it open. And if you do have trunks, don't open up them wider than they need to be. If there are only a certain number of VLANs that need to flow from the distribution layer to this access VLAN, then only allow those VLANs. So think about it this way. You've got two distribution layer devices, and you know that this access switch only has, it only has VLANs 100 through 110. Why allow all VLANs? Because that's the default. All VLANs are allowed by default across a trunk. So what you do is you set up the allowed VLAN list, and when you use this syntax, it obliterates whatever allowed VLANs there were, and then sets it up this way. Do it on both sides. Don't do this on just one side, otherwise you're going to get a mishmash configuration, you're going to get some warning signs typically with DTP, and it's just not a good practice. So set up your allowed VLANs to be exactly what need to be allowed and no additional ones. Uh, you generally do allow uh, the native VLAN also, so look for that. Um, whether you allow for VLAN 1 is dependent on how you've deployed VLAN 1, but we don't want VLAN 1 to be our management VLAN, and so make sure that the management VLAN is also included so that you have management connectivity so you can secure shell in to that switch if you need to.